Today we're at the programming bench and we're going to take a look at HP tuners. We're going to look at HP tuners before EFI Live because I think it offers some functionality that EFI Live doesn't have. However, I am a big EFI Live fan and I must say that I think in some ways it surpasses HP tuners. But just like everything else, each has its advantage and disadvantage. Motec is an authorized HP tuner dealer and I do recommend anybody that has a Gen 5 conversion or is doing a Gen 5 kit by HP Tuners, it's really going to make your life a lot easier and you're going to see why after this video. This is the MPVI2. So this is version 2 of the HP Tuner interface. Here is, and you can see a lot of different tools here. This is the cable that I use and this is the old MPVI1. This cable, as you can tell, is a little more bulky and you have to use a cord on it where this MPVI2 can use Bluetooth to connect to your computer. However, when you're using Bluetooth, I'm told that you may not have functionality for all vehicles. You may have to use the cable for some of the Chrysler stuff. But this is the good old cable that I've had for years, and hundreds and hundreds of Jeeps have been programmed with this cable. Do not lose your interface. If you lose your interface, it's a nightmare trying to get it replaced or cloned. Let's take a quick look at some of the other things in this drawer. This is EFI Live and we're going to talk about that in another video. This is the Micropod 2 which is Ytech 2. Ytech is the Chrysler software, the factory Chrysler software. We use this mongoose for GM TDS, technical delivery system or, or service programming system. You're going to use a similar J2534 device if you want to do GM programming. And as you can see we've uh, programmed a few GM computers here in the last month. So when you purchase this interface from Motec or wherever you get it offline it's not going to be registered to anybody. You need to register it. We're going to go through that. Not only do you need to register the tool with HP Tuners, but you also have to license the vehicle that you're going to tune into the tool. And we're going to go through that also. It can be quite confusing because actually the V1 and the V2 have different procedures to license it. I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Exactly what do these do, EFI Live and HP Tuners? Well, what they do is they tune your vehicle. So they're not scanners per se. Now this is a HP Tuner scanner that I have open here in the computer and it is a very powerful scan tool and we're going to go over it. But really what we're interested in is the tuning functions of these tools. So the first thing you're going to do when you get your interface is you're going to register it with HP Tuners. So let's go over to the computer and figure out how we do that. The first thing you want to do is get on hptuners.com. You will notice that HP Tuners and other tuning manufacturers have really jumped into GM with both feet because there's so many excellent powertrains that GM makes. Here you see the ZR1 the LT4, LT5, we got the L84 and the L87 which are the predecessors to the L83 and the L86. I also want to briefly mention that HP Tuners does have a bulletin board or a forum so if you have questions there's pretty good support there. The first thing you're going to do is go to downloads and you're going to download the HP Tuner software. In the HP Tuner software is both a scanner and a editor. I suggest you just get the full version. You don't need the beta version. That's the latest and greatest stuff. But I do recommend that you update your HP tuners about once a week because HP tuners is constantly adding functionality to the software. And if you don't update for a while, you're going to be missing out on that. Once you get the software downloaded, you need to register with HP tuners. If you have an account, log in. If you don't, register and follow the prompts. When you hit my account, it's going to bring up this page. My devices are probably the most important page you need to go to. When you click on that, it's going to bring you to your interface cables. Now here's your MPVI-1 interface cables. You can add one. So here's my MPVI-1 cable. You can see that I have a lot of credits on this cable and we can add credits here. And I'm going to show you the process because MPVI-1 and MPVI-2 are licensed differently. With MPVI-1, this is your application key, this long series of letters and numbers. When you license or purchase credits, this number changes, then you need to copy it and paste it into the editor. This is the editor here, the one with a little wrench. The one with a lightning bolt is your scanner. So let's say I want to add credits to my MPVI-1 device. I come here, I hit add credits. Now here's what's important about the MPVI-1 credits. They are specific by manufacturer. So if you want to program GM, you have to buy GM credits. You want to program Jeep, you have to buy Dodge credits. If you mistakenly buy Dodge credits and want to program your GM, you're out of luck. You got to come back here and buy Dodge credits. So be aware of that. Once you purchase these credits, we're going to go back to the previous page. This application key is going to change. You are going to highlight it, copy it, 
We're going to open up our editor. We're going to do all of our licensing under the Help menu. Open up Help and you will see you have the MPVI 1 application keys, which I just copied, and we have the MPVI 2 verification code, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So if I open up this, I right click, paste, you will see that this number is the same as this number because I haven't made any changes or purchased any licenses since I did this last. But I'm going to go ahead and add the key anyway just to show you how it looks. Now I have updated to the latest application key which has the latest license information for me. Back here, let's scroll down to the MPVI2 devices. Now you'll notice that we have a lot of them but that's basically because we're a dealer. So once you get your MPVI2 device registered, you're going to have the serial number here and a verification number here. Now let's just pick one of these out and add some credits. You're going to see that this is a different setup than the MPVI1. These credits are universal and what that means is these credits can work on Ford, Dodge, and Chrysler. You do not have to buy manufacturer specific credits. I guess that's an advantage over the MPVI1 that these credits will work for any of the manufacturers. So once you buy those credits You're going to have your serial number, your verification number here. But the process is a little bit different. If we come back here to the editor, you're going to go to help, just like you did with the MPVI 1, but you're going to pick MPVI 2. You're going to have your serial number, your verification number in here. Now, there is no cable hooked up to this, so it's not sensing it. But once you do that, enter it. And here's what I find important you got to come back here to help. You need to make sure you have internet connection and hit resync interface. When you do that, the MPVI2 license will resync with the website and your license credits will be put into your device. I know that's kind of a tricky thing to do, but once you get used to it, it's not difficult. Just remember, with the MPVI1, you have to copy and paste that application key in once you purchase your credits. With MPVI2, put your serial number, verification number in once you know those are in correctly. Come back here and resync the interface while you have internet